now say. So in this last clipping of the production function, we are about to look into the relationship that exists between the total product, marginal product and the average product. Yes, in the previous clippings we have understood the law of variable proportions or the short run production function through a table, through a diagram and also we have understood why there are three different phases to the law of variable proportions. Yes, now what we are going to discuss today is some more basic concepts of the production function like the average product and the marginal product, the relationship between the two and the total product and the marginal product. Yes, so we would try and look into the relationship between these concepts through a table. Right, what I'm going to do here is the same basic table of the short run production function. So from there, we will move on to the average product and take it further. Right, so fixed inputs as well as the variable inputs are going to be made use of in the short run, and even as the fixed and the variable inputs are going to be combined in a certain fashion, the change that happens in the total product and marginal product is what you have understood already. So that's what I'm going to show here along with the marginal product, right? Now total product, it refers to the total output. Marginal product can be understood as the change in the total product. The rate of change of the total product is what is the marginal product, yes? So what is the average product? Average product can be expressed as the total product divided by the variable input or it is the per unit output of the variable input. So that is why it is Tp by the variable input. Yes? What did we understand? Fixed inputs in the short run, they are going to remain fixed and the increase in the total product is going to happen only due to additional units of the variable inputs. Yes? So, one unit of the fixed factor plus one unit of the variable factor would give probably a certain amount of output. In this case, I have taken it as 10. The combination of 1 is to 1, one fixed input and one variable input is going to give the total output or the total product as 10. Yes, the first combination resulting in the first set of output or the initial output will be the same as the marginal output. Then to reach on to the next level of output, you know initially there is going to be increasing returns to scale indicating that the MP is increasing and the TP will increase at an increasing rate, isn't it? So 10 plus 15, that would be 25. And then even as the third unit of variable input is going to be higher in the process of production, the contribution by the third laborer is going to be, let us say, 20. So that means the total product is going to be 25 plus 20 and that is going to be 45. One more unit of the variable input now, maybe this is going to be the ideal ratio right, of the variable input and the fixed input and the contribution done by the fourth laborer, let us say, is going to be 20 again. So that means the total product would be contribution made by the 3 plus the 4, so 45 plus 20 and that is going to be 65. Yes, so one more unit of the variable input when it is going to be employed in the process of production. Let us say now the marginal product is going to fall. Why? Maybe because there is going to be a decreasing returns. Initially, there is going to be increasing returns. Right? So the contribution made by the fifth person is going to be, let us say, 15. Yeah, so what is going to be the total product in such a case then? Hmm? Is that going to be 18? 65 plus 15, that's going to be 18. And then let us say the 6th person is going to contribute 
10 units of output. So yeah, that is going to be 90. And then one more person, the seventh person is going to be employed in the process of production. The seventh person is going to contribute nil. Or the marginal product is going to become zero. So then six plus the seventh person, the total product will be 90 plus zero. So total product is going to become maximum that is going to mark the end of the second phase. Decreasing returns phase will end there. And let us assume in case, in case, in case the entrepreneur is going to move on to employ this eighth unit of variable input, then the marginal product will become negative and the total product will start falling. Yeah, so this is what is given to you already as the law of variable proportions. So what have you understood? You have understood in the increasing returns to phase, the total product basically increases at an increasing rate and the marginal product increases. What about the average product? The average product, you look into it, I've already given it to you that it is understood as a total product divided by the variable input or it is the per unit output of the variable input. Yes? So, if it is going to be Tp by the variable input, for this first combination, it's going to be 10 by 1. So, 10 by 1 will be equal to 10. And then 25 by 2 will be the level of average product for the second combination. So, that will be 25 by 2 and that is going to be 12.5. So, then for the third unit, what happens? 3 laborers and 1 unit of land, they are going to be combined. Look at the average product, that is going to be 45 by 3. Yes, so 45 by 3 will be 15. Yes, and then the next level, what happens there? That would be 65 by 4, right? 65 by 4, how much will that be? So this will be 1 and this will be 18. Right, 18.2. What is happening here? You see that the marginal product, it is increasing in this particular phase. 10, 15, 20 and then it becomes maximum. Hmm? Marginal product is increasing. What about the average product? Average product is also increasing. 10, 12.5, 15 and then 18.2. Yeah. Then, the second phase of the production function, short run production function or the law of variable proportions, we understand that the marginal product has started falling. Look at this, 15, 10, 0. Hmm? What will be the behavior of the average product? Let's see that. Average product during this particular phase, hmm? for the fifth unit of variable input, we have understood that the total product will be 80. Yes? So, this would be 80 divided by 5 because what is average product? It is the total product divided by the variable input. Isn't it? So, that is going to be how much? 1 out here and then 3. Yes? So, that is going to be 16. Fine? Right? Then, subsequently, subsequently when you move on to the Next level, what happens there? It's going to be 90 by 6. Total product divided by the variable inputs. Total product is 90, 90 by 6. Fine. So 90 by 6, if you are going to calculate, how much will that be? 1 and then 3. Fine. So that's going to be 30 by 6. So is that going to be 5? Yeah. So what's happening here? Hmm? The next level, 90 by 7. The total product is constant. The total product is constant. It's 90 there, 90 here again. But then the variable input, it is increasing. Isn't it? So naturally, the average product at this particular level will be much lower once more. Yeah. So... We are going to calculate that. What will this be? Hmm? 
90 divided by 7, so that would be 1. And then what are we going to carry? 20, so will that be 13 point, 13 point 3 something? Yes? What's happening here? Average product is also falling during this particular phase. The MP is falling. The average product is also falling. But look at this. The marginal product is going to become zero. Initially, the marginal product increased and then it decreased. It becomes zero and further engagement or employment of the variable input is going to result in a negative marginal product. But then the average product will not go on to become zero or negative. Why? For the simple reason that AP is calculated as the total product divided by the variable inputs. And total product, we see that it's positive throughout. Fine, right? it's positive throughout and there's no area where we have shown the TP to be zero. Total output will not become zero. No entrepreneur or producer is going to reach on till the total product is going to become zero, isn't it? Maximizing total product will be ideally the objective, isn't it? So, no way the TP is going to become zero. For the same reason, the AP can never become zero, nor will it become negative. Yes? So, the average product, it is increasing and then it is falling and it will stay in the positive quadrant even though it falls. Yes? So, when the MP becomes zero, AP is still falling. And when MP is going to go on to the negative quadrant, look at this, TP is 85 and the MP is negative. What about the average product? To calculate the average product, it would be 85 divided by H. So, that would be 10 point, 10 point, Yes. So, if you are going to show this through a diagram, let us show the total product and the, uh, just the total product I think in this will do. Again, let us take up a double panel wherein total product will be shown in the first panel and we will try and show the marginal product and the average product in the next. Right? Marginal product, again let me recollect it for you, always start your diagram with a marginal product where it will be very easy for you to show the increasing, decreasing and the negative return space and then you can backtrack the total product, you can show the different phases of the total product. Right? So, let us start with a marginal product, we are going to show the marginal product and the average product out here. Along the x-axis, the variable input is going to be measured in both the panels. Right? So the MP, it is going to increase, become maximum and then it is going to fall. So if this is going to be the marginal product, right? the first phase of the short run production function, which is the increasing return stage, you know that the total product will be increasing at an increasing rate. Right? And then the end of the second phase, the end of the second phase will be where MP is going to become zero and further MP might become negative, isn't it? So this is the decreasing return stage. This is the decreasing return stage. So decreasing return stage, the TP will still be increasing, yes? And when MP is going to go on to the negative quadrant, then the TP will start falling. So this is going to be the total product and this is going to be the marginal product. Now this is what you have already seen. So what about the average product? Average product, when you are going to trace it, yeah, through the three different phases, the initial phase we understand that the average product is increasing and then it falls. When? Though it falls, it never becomes zero, never becomes negative. For the simple reason that the total product never becomes zero, never becomes negative. Yes? So, average product 
also will increase, it will fall, but never become zero, nor will it go under the negative quadrant. Fine, so that's what we are supposed to show up here. And if you're if you try and plot this, you will understand that when the products are increasing, the marginal and the average products are increasing, the increase in the marginal product is much faster compared to that of the average product. Yes, look at this by 5 units, by 5 and 5. Yes, and look at this one. The increase is much lower, yeah, from 10, 12.5, 15. Steady, AP is steady. Why? What's the reason? What's the reason? Hmm? Marginal product, it refers to the addition that is made to the total product due to one more unit of the variable input employed. Yeah. So even as one more variable input is employed, what is the resultant change in the output is what is H as MP. But what is AP? AP is TP by variable input. So we are actually taking it up. See, look at this. Huh? 65 by 4. 65 by 4. So we are taking into account all the four units of the variable inputs. Right? But MP, if you look into it, it is a contribution done by only the fourth unit. Isn't it? Yeah? Only the fourth unit contribution we are looking at it. Right? Whereas here the AP is calculated as the total product that is made by all the four divided by all the four units of the variable input. Right? So it's an average. So that will definitely be much slower and steadier compared to the marginal product. Right? And this concept is not new to you even in the marginal unity concept you have understood this. Isn't it? Fine. So if you try and show the average product in the diagram, again just the general behavior as I keep telling you, Right? The average product, it will increase and then it will fall. Fine? So, till when will that increase be? Till when will that increase be? Right? And now what are we discussing about? We are discussing about just the average and the marginal product in that particular panel out there. Isn't it? Hmm? Look at this marginal product has increased and then it has started falling and it is going to be the falling portion it is going to be the falling portion of the marginal product which is going to cut the average product and MP will continue to fall okay and it is going to be the fall in the marginal product which is going to eventually pull down even the average product right so that means that means the marginal product will cut the average product at average product's maximum point. Right? And after the intersection of the AP and the MP, MP will continue to fall and that will eventually pull down even the AP or AP will start falling only after the intersection of the MP and the AP. Yes, let me repeat it. While the products are increasing, the MP will be increasing much faster compared to that of the average product or the AP. Right? AP will increase very, very steadily. It will keep increasing. Right? But even as AP is going to increase, MP will increase, become maximum, will start falling. And it is the falling portion of the MP that will cut the AP at AP's maximum. And MP will continue to fall. And in that falling MP, the falling MP will bring down the average product also eventually. Yes, right? So, while AP falls, MP will be lying below the AP. Let me repeat, while AP falls, MP will be lying below the AP. And at AP's maximum point, the falling portion of the MP will be cutting the AP. And while the products are increasing, we see that the MP will be lying above, the MP curve will be lying above the average product curve. Yes? So that is the relationship between the AP and the MP. Both of them are basically derived from the total product. 
while the average product is the total product divided by the variable inputs, the marginal product is the rate of change of the total product. Fine, so that's the first thing that you have to be reminded of. Both the marginal product and the average product, they are dependent on the total product. They basically derive from the total product. While one is the rate of change of the total product itself, the other one is the average. Yes. And to summarize the relationship between the AP and the NP, AP and NP, both of them rise initially. AP and NP, both of them, they increase. Then AP, while it is still increasing, MP will become maximum and it will start falling. Falling portion of the MP will cut the AP at AP's maximum. And after the intersection, AP will start falling, but it will remain in the positive quadrant. While MP is going to become zero and it will move on to the negative quadrant. Fine. So this is how the average and the marginal products are related. So what we have done in this particular chapter is the law of variable proportion. Yeah, and then we have looked into the short time period and the long time period. How in the short time period some inputs alone change and others remain fixed. And we have gone on from there to discuss about the short run production function in detail. And we try to establish the short run production function relationship through the schedule and through the diagram with some basic concepts. Right? So with that, we are done with the production function chapter. So as I suggested earlier, this is one small portion of the producer behavior. More is yet to come. So in the upcoming chapters, we will be discussing about the cost, the revenue, and the profitability in the production process. Yes. Namaste.